Good morning class. Time for me to take roll call. When I call your name, please raise your hand or say present. Matthew Kane. Present. Joyce Brighton. Present. Annabelle Marks. Present. Philip Harris. Philip Harris. Is Philip here? Philip ain't here, Mr. Bills. You mean Philip isn't here, right? Yay. That's what I said. Does anybody know where Philip is today? He told me that he didn't feel like coming to school, that he was going to go hang out at the mall today. What? Philip decided to go hang out at the mall. Are you being serious? Uh, well, yay, he likes to hang out at the mall. Maybe he does like to go hang out at the mall, but he is supposed to be here, in class. He has been spending a lot of class time hanging out at the mall, Mr. Bills. Class. What do we call it when a student, by free will or choice, does not attend school? I call him, lucky. Very lucky. <laughs> Stop. Stop this silly nonsense. But she did have a good answer, Mr. Bills. And you did ask us a question. You all are laughing now, but this could be very serious. Again, I ask. When a student uses free will or chooses to not attend school and they are not sick, we call that being truant. Philip is practicing truancy. Oh no. That sounds really serious. Yay well it could be very very serious. Basically, the student does not have permission to be absent from school and does so anyway. There are two types of truancy. 1. Habitual and 2. Chronic The difference between a habitual and a chronic truant is the number of days student has been absent. A habitual truant is absent from school without a legitimate excuse for five or more consecutive days, seven or more school days in one school month, or twelve or more school days in one year. A chronic truant is absent from school without a legitimate excuse for seven plus consecutive school days, ten or more school days in one school month, or 15 plus school days in a year. Wow, I didn't know that, Mr. Bills. Neither did I, Mr. Bills. What can happen to Philip? A lot of things can happen. Some states have the power to revoke a student's driver's license if they don't go to school. Wow, we did not know that could happen. That would be a disaster. Philip loves to drive. And we love it when Philip drives. Will someone please tell Philip that being truant is a very serious matter and he needs to focus on being in class? Yes, Mr. Bills. I will tell him tonight. Okay class, we need to get started on classwork. We have new vocabulary words to learn. Please sit down. Our vocabulary test is Friday, let's review. Can anyone tell me what a domicile is? I know Mr. Bills. I know the answer. Okay Annabelle, tell us. What is a domicile? It is the place where the student lives with a parent or guardian. Very good Annabelle. Before a student can enroll, the student must occupy a dwelling located within the school boundaries. Matthew, can you tell us what is meant by a residence? Residence is the primary place where a person dwells permanently, not temporarily, and is the place that is the center of his or her domestic, social, and civic life. Very good Matthew. Also, keep in mind that a temporary residence in the school district, solely for the purpose of attending a public school, shall not be considered residency. Yeah, I knew that. Who can tell me what the phrase free public education means? Joyce? Any ideas? The provision of an adequate public education for the citizens shall be a primary obligation of the state of Georgia. Wow Joyce. You have impressed me. Sometimes I even impress myself Mr. Bells. Mr. Bells, don't they use property taxes to pay for schools? You are correct, Annabelle. Public education for the citizens prior to the college or post-secondary level shall be free and shall be provided for by taxation. Another word on our vocabulary list is double jeopardy. What is double jeopardy? Being tried twice for the same offense. Correct. However, where the same offense violates both the state and the federal statutes, the separate prosecution and punishment by both governments is not double jeopardy. If a kid does something really wrong, like beats up another kid real bad, can he get in trouble with the school and the police? That is an excellent question. If a student assaults another student, 
He can be arrested and tried in criminal court and he can also be brought before a tribunal hearing. But, ain't the double jeopardy? No Matthew, the courts view public school disciplinary matters as issues separate and apart from criminal prosecutions and punishments. It could sure feel like double jeopardy. It happened to me and I sure felt like I was catching it from both the school and the courts. It may feel like double jeopardy, but the prohibition does not prevent public schools from holding a hearing for the same offense that a criminal court has already addressed. Wow, what a bummer. Moving right along. What is due process? Isn't that about the principle of fairness? and where there are steps that must take place when addressing disciplinary issues. Very good Annabelle. The state must adhere to the four touchstones of procedural due process. First, notice should be given stating specific charges and if proven, would justify the penalty. Second, a hearing should be conducted offering both sides the opportunity to be heard in considerable detail. Third, the student should be given the opportunity to tell their side of the story. Fourth, the results of the hearing should be open for the student's inspection. What about the word hearsay? Who knows what hearsay is? Doesn't hearsay mean something like, I hear he say Billy stole the apple? He 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 that's funny. He he he, that was funny Matthew. And really quite clever. In judicial courts, hearsay is not allowed, but in a school disciplinary hearing, the hearings are informal and the rules of evidence do not apply. So hearsay is allowed. That could be bad for a kid that was just kidding around and said something stupid, you know? Well, at this age, teenagers need to be responsible for their actions and their words, whether it be words spoken or words written. And last, but not least, can anyone tell me what in-school suspension means? I know. I know. That is what happens when someone gets caught doing something really wrong. They get kicked out of class and they have to spend the day in that room next to the assistant principal's office doing their assignments. Your description is accurate. It is a form of temporary timeout. As long as the student has access to his books and has work to do, due process is not required. That concludes the vocabulary review. Does everyone feel prepared for tomorrow's test? I am. Well, I think I am. Great. Okay. It is almost lunchtime. Study tonight and everyone should do well on the test. Matthew, please tell Philip that if he continues to practice truancy, he may experience in-school suspension and if that doesn't encourage him to modify his behavior, it may be necessary to follow due process and call for a tribunal hearing. Yay, and him telling us that he hangs out at the mall instead of coming to school can be used against him, even though it is hearsay. Ha 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 ha, that is funny. Ha 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 ha, okay, class dismissed. Goodbye Mr. Bills. See you tomorrow.